for these simple demonstrations I'm going to work in the standard demonstration Scott schema and all I've got defined at the moment are the default constraints that come with that schema there's a primary key on the empty table there's a primary key on the depth table and there's a foreign key constraint between emp and depths on the column depths node. There are three constraint types as usually considered in this sort of environment. Foreign key constraints, not null constraints and unique constraints. I'm going to demonstrate that all three of these are vital in your warehouse so that the optimizer can come up with the best execution plans. I'll begin with the foreign key constraint. The example I'm going to take is a simple query that will detect which employees are not assigned to a valid department. I'll enable the autotrace facility and this is my query. Select star from emp where not exists. Select star from depths where depth.depthno equals emp.depthno. So which employees are not in the department that is defined in the department table. And we've run that statement with a full table scan of AMP, checking whether the department number is in fact null. And that's only possible because of this referential integrity constraint. What happens if I disable that constraint? Also table AMP, modify constraint F code depth to no, disable no validate. And now rerun the query. Well, that's a very different plan, isn't it? We've had to do scans of the pkdapt index to implement an anti-join. That's going to be a much less efficient plan. That was with the constraint in the disabled no validate state. There is an intermediate state, which some people may try, which is the rely no validate state. Well, let's try it and see if that makes any difference. Run the query again. And sorry, still doesn't work. We're having to run the query as a join. So that should be a simple example of why you need your foreign key constraints. It's not just about data integrity. It's about letting Oracle develop better execution plans. So before we proceed further, I'll just put the constraint back into the state it should be, which is enabled and validated. 